And now for the Monero development segment. Hey, how's it going? Digger. Hey, Digger. What's up, man? Nothing much. Um, is also I'm in DC, so it's also hot here. So I definitely feel you on that, though. <laughs> right, I mean, Greece was hot, but I guess I was like, you know, I was at the beach every day. Here, it's like it's hot. When New York hot. It's just kind of it's kind of miserable because it's also muggy too. You know, it's not dry heat. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, it's super humid where I live. So even when I went to Mexico, it was like it was pretty warm, but it was like dry, so it didn't feel mm-hmm. bad. But then I came back home, and I'm actually like, holy crap, it's like way hotter here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, no, I, I like the heat. I like the summer. But I just want to, you know, I'd rather be out on the beach swimming in the ocean. Although now there now there's sharks everywhere on, in New York on Long Island. It's like insane. <laughs> it's like insane. Like crazy amount of sharks. You can't, five, you can't write five this people stuff. got got bit by sharks in like the last like week in like oh, new york what? yeah yeah in new york on the long island beaches bit <laughs> like not not like sea shark like they got it like <laughs> like shark bites it's like Obviously, nightmare they, were, they weren't great whites or you know uh i don't know man killers but still people getting nibbed at by <laughs> <laughs> i'll be that guy man i love swimming in the i when i go i don't like bait like i swim i like swim far like i'm like like fuck no i can't swim in the ocean Shark <laughs> can't do anything these days no man i'm, I'm something some, i don't know i think the aliens are behind that one i don't know what's going on <laughs> <laughs> but um let's make sure doug gets to go Maybe we, maybe I should take a long time. Though you don't, yeah, you're, you're swim, saving, maybe you you're don't probably saving my life. You're probably saving my life. <laughs> well, today we have a sort of long one because um I did some research into cool ways to get Monero because I I run a business in Monero so I I I have the opposite problem like have to like you um sell Monero to like fund the business so I, I did the research into like what are ways people actually should get Monero they want to get it they can exchange it and all those things like that nice. And this is recently because um, I started researching like Havana. I don't know anything about Havana. So I was like, I mean, they do some research to this. Then it spread into everything like from Sarai into Atomic Swaps. I decided to put like a a very quick like TLDR into like the current meta for buying Monero and uh, without an exchange and the things coming on the horizon. The status of Atomic Swaps, the status of um, Havana, Haven, and Sarai pretty much. All right. But yeah, so this is um slightly inspiring. I saw someone post that SideShift suddenly dropped Monero support. Um, no one in Monero space is surprised or stressed. It's not a big deal. It happens. This literally happens all the time. But then, you know, this happens all the time with Binance. These things delist. Monero gets delisted all the time. It's just way of being in crypto space. But then that made me think about ways to get Monero, which... um aren't on an exchange. And the main way we that I knew about before I did this research was like local Monero, all right? And if you haven't learned from local, local Monero, I don't know where you've been. It's like, to my knowledge, the most like, highest volume way to get Monero. I don't know if it actually competes with this. Like, I, in my, at least culturally speaking, local Monero is much more popular in Monero space. And basically, local Monero works is, um, it's a centralized peer-to-peer. There is a, it's a platform, but the admins run the platform and they hold, they hold the money. Currently, hopefully that will change when we go. Monero gets popular. Multi sig. I thought you guys are working on multi sig for the. Uh, it... uh, uh, I don't know. Oh, Tux, oh, 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 wait, wait. All right. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just doing some some unrelated reading on GitHub, but yeah, we are working on a uh, a Monero based marketplace that will have multi sig. I didn't even put you on blast. I, I just saw Tuxedo's response to the CSS. So yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, I yeah. Guess yeah the, inf- the information's out there. We're just not talking about it too much because you know we don't. Just like with the Noto, don't want to talk until we until we have something to show. Uh, Noto, obviously, we're there. Monero, this this new project, we we get we got some some climbing to do, right, Tux? But um, <laughs> the guy working yeah. on it uh, is pretty. He's 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 first working on this on this multi sig implementation. And so, if you can get that, then we'll we'll proceed with the rest of it and um, try to be. I mean, as far as I know, there's really no um, trustless escrow Monero marketplace, right? Yeah, I mean, no. Period. Monero none. market that has escrow, but it's not trustless. Um, yeah. So we're we're trying to implement that. It's 
and we we found somebody who uh thinks he can pull it off so but yeah we, we, we don't want to say much more because you know we don't want to toot, toot our own horn without before we get there you know Sorry, I didn't, I didn't even put you on blast. I always... no, no worries, it's good. That's oh, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the it's better coming from somebody else than from us. But yeah, basically, the local mayor, like Doug said, is still centralized in the manner that you have to trust them not to steal your funds. Like Doug said, also, there's currently no decentralized peer-to-peer... -peer, uh, well, there's no multi-sig decentralized Monero platform yet. Because uh, multi signature has a long history in Monero, it was it was working for a while. Then there was a bug, and it got dropped. And all the, it's a long, complicated history. And Doug's team's working. Well, I don't I don't want to. Yeah, like uh, I'm yeah. not technical enough, but uh, you know, you can do multi sig in Monero. Uh, yeah. Rhino, right, is doing some interesting things with with multi sig. Um, but as far as I know, nobody has done multi sig escrow on a mar you know, you know, in a marketplace or on a platform like something like local Monero that doesn't exist yet. Yes, you are just correct. Because it's difficult to implement multi. Yeah, Monero. difficult for users to use. What wallet do you use? Because it's currently not supported by the Monero GUI. So it's like, like, you, yeah. So because it's completely correct. But this is the most popular way I see, culturally speaking, most mentioned way is to use local Monero to um, pretty much. And it's, it's a way, the big thing, good thing about local Monero is you can get, you can pretty much mail someone cash in the mail and they'll give you Monero. Which I think is is probably the better way than using something like your bank account, Venmo, or Cash App. It's more anonymous, things like that. So this is one of the most popular ways to get Monero right now. But um, and once you have that Monero, you can use something like Cake Wallet and Trocador is a really cool app that pretty much lets you. So first step is to get fiat to Monero or Bitcoin or something, and Trocador allows you to swap into any other coin from that. Basically, what they do is they go to all these swap services. And they aggregate them for you. Pretty much, it's sort of like the Google of swap services. You go in there, and they, they give you like, this one has five stars, this has four stars. This one's the cheapest. And you can pretty much shop around, do that. And really cool thing is super easy to use. Cake Wallet has it integrated currently, also. So once you get your Monero, you know, fiat to crypto, you can get any coin you want, which is pretty much I think the current meta for doing this. I think it's a pretty popular way of doing. It. Is that right, Doug? What people using Trocador? Yeah. Yeah, pretty popular, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. I mean, it's one. It's one of the, I guess, the major swap services. But like you said, what's nice about it is they aggregate all of them, right? So it's like you're getting, yeah. I guess, the best uh, trade at that at that time when you go to swap, right? Because they're they're finding mm -hmm. the, the the best price, whatever. Yeah. So that's the current meta for if you want to have, um, you have fiat, you want to get Monero, you want to get Bitcoin, we'll do something else. But now I'm gonna go into some decentralized options, which are generally more experimental maybe a little less reliable but they're decentralized so you don't have to worry about too much third-party risk now i would say the most popular decentralized option right now is i guess fortunately or unfortunately bisque but i'm thinking what bisque is it's pretty much like um a decentralized marketplace you have to install an app run a node do all these things but the, uh, the bad thing i don't like about it is that you can't go from fiat to monero because um, bisque is currently um bitcoin focused so in order to go from get Bitcoin from cash, you have to go fiat to Bitcoin, then Bitcoin to Monero, which makes it much harder to get the Monero, makes the liquidity pools lower, probably higher prices. But BISC is a decentralized option that's pretty popular in general. And someone a couple of years ago, I think two years ago, saw the issue and basically have have Vinio. I don't want to pronounce it wrong. You know how to pronounce it, Doug? Havino. 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 Yep. It's basically so uh, a fork of BIS that's made to be Monero specific. So you, you probably heard it around a lot. I heard it around a lot. I didn't know what it, the difference was between BIS, Havano, Havino, mm -hmm. and these other projects. So I'm just giving a quick overview of them. And the current status is I think it's being worked on. Last I checked, they were actually acquired by Cake Wallet or yeah, at, at Monero. Monero too. You know, there was um, well, I don't know the acquire. They're I guess funding the development um um they, they had some issues if you remember with funding they raised mm -hmm. money but then the price of monero went down and uh yeah i think they suspended it like last year didn't they the development of it yeah uh but at monerotopia we had uh you know the the main guy uh the main dev presented it and so they're they're pretty much there i think they you know they've launched the the test net right i believe yeah and i i the yeah. the I believe Testnet's live, and I also I looked yeah. at their GitHub, and I think Woodsir, yeah, who Woodsir. was a Monero core dev, had committed like two weeks ago. 
So it's yeah, very he, much alive. He, he presented that at Monerotopia at the time. Oh, and, yeah. Um, and we'll be putting up that video soon. That was one of the videos where unfortunately we lost electric in the in the dome for a oh, man. Of time uh but luckily somebody there recorded it locally with their phone so we'll we'll edit that together and get it out um but he goes into <laughs> detail about the woodser goes into detail about the havino project and and the launch of the test net but yeah go ahead do you and take it away yeah, so basically, um, is this is meant to be a quick overview. If you see all these names thrown around, you see advertisements and talks, to give you a quick overview of what these things are. So like uh, Doug said, I don't want to iterate him again. Um, this is a BIS fork run by, um, so funded in part by Cake Wallet. Um, the code's been written by some of the Manila recorded up. So really cool projects, Testnet live right now. Basically, BIS focus or BIS Monero fork. So that's pretty much that is. Not live yet, still on Testnet. Then another thing you might have heard about is Sarai. And Sarai is really cool. Doug has a couple of interviews focused on Sarai and other projects. So Sarai, well, a lot of these other platforms require you to run a node, right? In order to use BISC, you have to run a Bitcoin node, I believe, and other different projects. And if you want to be a maker, there's all these other requirements. But pretty much what some um, really smart Monero devs came up with is you can use multi-sig to actually not require any nodes in the process, right? Basically, you sign a transaction. Well, I don't know exactly how it works, but you sign a transaction and you, you don't have to be online for it. You can post that transaction and post data back and forth. And it's decentralized also. So, so but Sarai is meant to be a really, um, not bare bones, but really simple and focused project. I think they plan to launch with Monero, Ethereum, Bitcoin, and DAI, I believe, as some options. DAI is a stable coin used. And it's really cool. They recently finished their um, audit by um, Cypher, Cypher Stack which is really um, popular in the Monero space. And they're also not live yet. They might, I'm not sure if they have a test net option up yet, but it's a really cool project. And I'm really excited for it. Really smart devs behind it. So this one yeah, would be just simpler. Hmm? Well, yeah, Luke Parker, right? So everybody, uh, obviously, everybody knows Luke Parker at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, and most famously recently for his work on full membership proofs. But this is, you know, the thing that he's really been focusing on up until mm -hmm. that has been Sarai. And I think the, the biggest thing to mention about Sarai, too, is it's um, it's kind of analogous to, to ThorChain, right? So um, mm -hmm. it's it's based on liquidity pools. So it's not uh, it's not a DEX. It's not peer, it's not peer to peer, right, where you're opening mm -hmm. up a trade with one other, one other individual, which kind of limits uh, liquidity, right? So it's based on liquidity pools. So whenever you want to go trade your Monero, um, there, there, you know, it's it's more fluid, right? You're not like yeah. looking for somebody to set up a trade with. Uh, you're coming, going in and out of these liquidity pools and trading through them. So it's it's effectively like a Thor chain that's Monero based. I think is the easiest way to explain it. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. It's just I feel like the, this space is very quickly evolving because I am not too familiar with Thor Chain myself. And I'm like, oh, these there's so many options that people just don't like talk. Like, if you, if you want to be decentralized and use Monero, you can do There's so many options like Doug said, like Thor Chain, all these other projects too that I'm not too familiar with. But so that's pretty much the ride. Um, the next one, also, I believe not live yet, just got audited. I'm not sure if they have a, they probably have some type of test net, but I'm not, I'm not sure how open that test net is right now. And then Haven, which is really cool. I had heard a lot about it. Did some research last night, and Havens is also a decentralized exchange up well platform. And their idea is that you can have um, private assets essentially, so you can like have synthetic coins that track the gold price, synthetic coins that track the oil price, and things like that. Of course, you have a, you have um, stable private coins. All these that's their main goal from reading their white paper last night. And it's also not live yet. It went live on testnet but then they had some issues oh i think it went live live like you could use it then there were some issues last um during the bear market i think they pulled it back i think they've done some more testing around that i believe cakes cake wallet supports or at some point supported buying it and holding it i believe uh yeah i think it's, it's yeah. built into cake wallet. you could hold your your haven there but obviously yeah they've they've run into issues with their the algorithm right it's an algorithmic stable mm -hmm. coin yeah uh, and that hasn't really proven to to work <laughs> it's it yeah. sounds great in theory uh but they've had issues with actually uh making it work in reality 
Yeah, it's really impressive. I mean, Ethereum has a hard time tracking synthetic assets. I can't imagine trying to do that on top of Monero also with all the privacy, all the other issues the chain's going to give you versus something like um, Ethereum, which is really cool project. Hopefully they, they um, like I said, they were live at one point. I'm not sure about the current status of it. Hopefully they get um, they get back going because it's really cool to be able to have private, you know, gold coins that track gold price. It's really cool to have private coins that track the oil price or whatever thing like that. And that's pretty much like a quick overview of the DEXs. So if you hear these things now, you'll know what they mean. And now we're going to get some really cool stuff about atomic swaps, which also, like, I don't know why they're not talking about more. They're really cool. And some of them are actually live right now. I know, well, Doug talks about it. Like, literally everything I look up, Doug has an interview with the person. So it's just like, <laughs> so, but I would, hopefully they get more use. Yeah, so we right have. Now, uh, would, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So um, just a quick overview of the atomic swap space. Unstoppable Swap is a service that allows you to swap. Currently, this is live, but you can only go from Bitcoin to XMR with an unstoppable swap. So you can currently do this. I'm not sure how deep the liquidity pool is right now. Wasn't able to pull up and get it tested, but this is currently something that you can literally run on your computer. It, re it requires a full note on both ends, I believe. If I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong about that, but it does require some dev work. Like you have to go to GitHub, run the Docker, do all that kind of stuff. But like currently, you can swap from Bitcoin to XMR using Unstoppable Swap atomic swaps. I'm going to step back a little bit and give an overview of what an atomic swap is. And atomic swap is a decentralized way that allows you to swap from one chain to another in, in an atomic manner. And that means that if something goes wrong, e either the transaction goes through completely or it doesn't go through at all. There is no way for you to get stuck in the middle in this weird state. That's why it's called atomic. atomic. It's meant to be decentralized peer-to-peer -peer also. And it's sort of different than what um, Doug mentioned earlier with Sarai, which is more of a pool type thing. This is meant to be literally some dude in somewhere has a node, you have a node, and y'all can run this software and go back and forth and swap coins. So that's really cool. Like right now, it currently runs. Um, you, you can go from Bitcoin to XMR. There's also another project, um, Farcaster, which allows you to go both ways. And they're they're actually been doing this right now. On the screen, I'm showing that they did like an the average swap was $400. The highest amount was $2,700. Um, so they're currently going back both ways. But once again, it's still um, really meant for devs to run right now. It's not really, you can't just pull it up, go to it. You have to like run like a node, all this stuff. So it's not really recommended for, I, I would say, people who are not technical. But it's really cool that you can currently do this as we speak right now. Also, there are ones I didn't mention, like um, Monerotopia. They talked, um, Elizabeth, I believe, did a presentation on Ethereum to Monero swaps. Yep. yep. Which yep. is really cool. I believe those can go both ways, and those are live currently also, right, Doug? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And there's also, Doug, of course, has an interview with Basic Swap, which also currently the service that runs. You can go back and forth between different. I think they had like Fyro supported, Monero supported, Bitcoin, Ethereum. I believe those are the ones that they have more also. So this is like, I don't really know why these things haven't caught on, honestly, because they're currently well, working. A lot of it, yeah, a lot of it has to yeah. do with usability, right? So atomic swap, mm. like you said, you, you basically have to be a, a dev or you know, have to, or yeah. not, you have to be technically inclined, right? Yes. And then beyond that, uh, it still requires the marketplace of connecting buyers and sellers, right? Ah. So, I mean, these things need to be built into an existing market, like something like a local Monero, maybe it becomes an option there, right? So you could send cash and mail, you could uh, use Venmo, or you could do an atomic swap with somebody. Like it has to be built into that so you can connect the, the buyers and the sellers, right? So, um, and, and that's, I, you know, all that stuff needs to be built out. Mm -hmm. um, and then so, and then I think we will start to see it being used more. Um, but I think I think that you know that's really why there it's not quote unquote popular yet because it's just not very usable for people to just go run and do an atomic swap. Um, but we did see recently. I, I don't know. Is it what was the one that was recently posted where somebody was uh, they kind of built? Oh, was that um, website right? Yeah, Tux. Maybe you know what I'm talking about. They built mm -hmm. a like a, a user friendly interface where you can basically uh trade and swap and there's atomic swaps happening on the back end behind the scenes supposedly but i don't think it's, it's atomic monero.com atomic monero.com right it's but like I... new so don't know who the people are uh the whatever code they're using for the site is not open source but it looks very interesting because they've made a very nice uh interface that so looks like it would be very friendly for people trying to get into something like atomic swaps and very easy to use 
Right. I don't really totally understand it, but then the idea is behind the scenes, the atomic swap is happening. Like, and so you as a user, you're not really dealing with that. You're just, it's kind of like you're, it's almost like you're using like an instant exchange, like Trocador or something. But then the, the behind the scenes exchanging is taking place using atomic swap, supposedly, right? Because we don't really yeah. know. Which is why it needs to be open source. Right. <laughs> so, which is, yeah, I don't know why, a little, a little sus that they would. Even it, then, even if it was open source, you're still trusting like their site, that the site they're, you know, that they're running is actually what the source is. But um, it looks interesting. We'll have to see what happens with that. But maybe it would be great. Maybe, maybe you know, maybe, uh, maybe they just haven't release it as open source yet maybe maybe it isn't too good to be true maybe it actually is what they say it is and that, that there you go that's a step in the direction of usability for atomic swaps that would be awesome yeah i saw that too that yeah all you said would make perfect sense and that was just a quick overview of like the cool ways to swap monero buy monero sell monero that aren't just like you know you go to kraken and you right. use a and you just go there like there are some really cool things hmm? Yeah, beyond traditional uh, centralized exchange, right? Yeah, uh, there are all these options. People mention them here and there, but you compile them all today. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, you covered it well, right? Basically, you have your traditional centralized exchange, then you have instant mm -hmm. exchanges, then you have dexes like like Haven and Bisc, uh, then you have atomic swaps, mm -hmm. and then you have things like Sarai, like these uh, I don't know liquidity pool chains, uh, yeah. swapping chains really cool stuff like i said um that was a quick hopefully you guys are paying attention because you're paying attention you got the answer to this uh question um which product does luke sorry luke work on mostly and by luke i mean luke parker if if you don't know who this man is like please like i don't know where you're at like come from beneath the rock please luke parker is doing great work with full membership proofs and other projects too so i'm gonna give y'all time to think the options are unstoppable swaps sarai dex and um havano so hopefully you've been paying any attention to the review interview, you'll know the answer to this question. And the answer is Sarai Dex. Luke spends most of his time, I believe, working on Sarai Dex. But who knows what Luke is doing? In his part time, he likes to just solve, you know, calls himself an informal cryptographer, but puts out some amazing, amazing work. And and of course, I said, if something exists in narrow space, Doug has an interview. So Doug has this really cool interview where Luke Park is like two hours long, both cars. Where they literally sit down and talk about Sarai decks and all these things and the trade offs and all this really cool stuff. It's a great interview. And Doug also has an interview with um, Basic Swap, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I believe we an interview with Elizabeth talking about Ethereum um, Monero swaps, also, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, check out the, the, the show. Really cool stuff. Like, literally, I'm, it's amazing stuff from Doug. I think that's it for me. But yeah, any questions? No, good job, man. Good job. I mean, uh, I think we should say, I always like to say, you like, especially with local Monero and mm -hmm. recently what we saw, I don't know, uh, uh, I, I, we certainly mentioned on this show, um, do you, and I don't remember if you were on the show or whatever, when it happened, but uh, the, the person that got arrested recently yeah. for using local Monero, uh, we've seen it happen in the past with local Bitcoins. Basically, the guy is, is accused of not having, you know, the proper licenses, right? That he's being labeled as a uh a money transmitter mm -hmm. um and because of that he, he needs the proper licenses uh i think he's also being accused of money laundering uh so the, the point is the simple point i'm trying to make is uh these these you know there, there's nothing uh well i guess depends on what jurisdiction you're in but speaking mm -hmm. from where i am here in new york and basically in the united states there's nothing illegal about trading monero for cash peer to peer, right? Uh, where you mm -hmm. run into a problem is if you're uh, actively doing it as a business and for profit. So you just got to be careful out there. Uh, these tools exist, uh, use them, but be be smart about it. Uh, if you want to start, you know, if you want to be in the business of being on local Monero and, and selling Monero for cash, you're you're taking your you're taking a risk there. But if out of your own personal need, from time to time, you have a need to exchange your Monero into cash or you have a need to purchase Monero using cash, local Monero is a great way to do it. But just be be cognizant of that uh before you, you know, 
be be aware. I think it's important to to make note of that. I think even local Monero, uh, they obviously would say the same thing, right? Like consult consult an attorney or something, right? But I mean, yeah. I don't know how how you know you, you, we have we have average Joes out there. They just want to get some Monero. They don't want to go like hire an attorney and talk to them first. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you know, and and I have to say too, right? This isn't legal advice, but this is this is personal advice. Um, just don't 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 do it as a business, right? And and you should you should be good. You're in the clear. Um, and so it's unfortunate that they're trying to make examples of people and scare people away. Uh, so I'm not saying don't don't be scared away. You know, we, we need to fight the fight. We need to normalize this. But we also don't want to you don't want to be the person they make an example of. So just don't be so egregious in how you how you use this tool. Yeah, and I think I would add a little more context. Like this isn't legal advice as a person who I think recently was um I think allegedly arrested was in California and they were the, the biggest one in America for local Monero if I'm not mistaken. Like the yeah, most they, volume. They were the biggest cash to Monero exchanger. Um yeah. or yeah essentially. So I think he was yeah, out Doug's... of New York actually. Oh was that New York? Oh okay. Well that makes it worse. I'm sorry New York's rough. <laughs> yeah. I had posted he was uh we you know some people kind of like figured out who he was by looking at the the court filings or whatever court papers um he, he was interviewed on a, on a on a youtube show it was an interesting guy like really like you watch it he's like you know oh. he's he's the type of person that uh is out there fighting the good fight uh an agorist and he's very idealistic and uh you know i very supportive of his beliefs and the things he yeah. was saying uh but he got he got caught up you know, and it's unfortunate. Uh, so just just be careful in how you how you use these things. Makes sense. I think that's it for me. Don't do it as a business. Don't don't you don't <laughs> use local Monero, but don't be out there uh, as uh, for business purposes trying to trying to buy and and sell Monero for for profit on there uh, because you know you may start exchanging with with somebody who's not just some normal peer, but you know a federal agent that's just looking to screw you over yeah all right sorry sorry to end on a down note <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> well hopefully um doug you, you don't get bitten by any any sharks or by a, a new york federal agent you know we gotta, <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're both so, in the water they're both in the water it's a very dangerous time to be in new york it sounds like <laughs> there's a lot of sharks in new york a lot of sharks <laughs> <laughs> All right, Deegan. Thank you so much, man. Yeah. Thank you, of course.